and what about this? And what and he's I haven't seen it, but he said it to me that she says, you know, and how do you feel about Jack Jack and Ernest and what do you think about that? And, and you know, she just answers all these questions and says, no, I invited them both to my yes. home, but she declined and it was very polite, but he said it's really interesting. So I'm gonna look at that. Yeah, search for it. I think it could be cool. <laughs> What's our timeline? Does everybody have to Four minutes. Should we open it up? Yes, sure. Yeah. 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 Sorry. We should have done it. <laughs> what do you all think of divas? If you are a diva today. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question for Ann. Just what I'm wondering when you say that Maria Callas is in your bones, like what what aspects of her do you find that you connect to especially? You know, not not so. It's interesting. I don't. I've tried to find. <clears throat> excuse me. I've tried to find um, similarities of Callas to me, and uh, our lives are totally different. She was insecure, she had, you know, she was rejected, she wasn't loved. I had a good life. But um, what I think I identify with is her passion for her art, her um, demand for excellence, her dedication to when she takes on something, that she's going to do it the best she can. And, um, and I think her love for art. I, I think you see, I think that, I think that's what, uh, you know, what kept her going. On the other hand, it's all she had. I find myself thinking sometimes, you know, she, she wasn't loved as a child, even as a baby. Um, she had no friends. She could have easily been a voice that was never discovered. And we dislike her mother for exploiting her as a young girl. Her mother put her off on all these you know, radio competitions and all. And, and she didn't have a good relationship with her mother. But you find yourself thinking, what if her mother hadn't done that? Then she wouldn't have known that she had a voice. And what if she hadn't met Nanagini? Because when she got, when she arrived, she got a very, uh, she got her first job and they weren't paying her and she had no money. Nanagini took her on because uh, he had money and he loved opera. What if she hadn't met I mean, We may never have had a real She could have been totally lost, you know. And so uh, that's all she had. Music was everything to her. And, um, and so I, I'm rambling, just like Maria. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where she's in my bones. <laughs> You know, her, her passion for art and her, her desire for people to find their talent and to do what they need to do and to bring themselves into their art. Not just to try to imitate Maria Callas, not just try to be like someone else, but to find, thank you, to find, um, thank you very much, to find what, what is within them that they bring to the role. And I think as a teacher, that's, that both of us are teachers. Yeah. Found that we're, we're trying to get people to, to commit and to realize how much work it does take and, and how important it is for them to find out who they are. And that's in the play. She's all the time, you know, in, in active training program. We don't have any of those students here, but that's so much of what we're, we work on in, in active training program. Well, find out who you are, you know, or are there some of your idols? Well, from, from the oh, good, good, good. <laughs> well, anyway, that, that's part of it. That's part of the art because, you know, it's all been done before. Uh, Lawrence Olivier has already done the roles. Kenneth Brown has done the roles. You know, I'm thinking the men, the women haven't done it very well yet. <laughs> but you know, also with her, there's a certain element about, I think, uh, the mystique about her is somewhat that it's, it's, it's hard to explain. You know, if you if you hear Nanjean Price, there's no problem explaining why she had a giant operatic career. It's the most beautiful sound, it's just gorgeous, and it's, she's a great singer, and she's, you know, it's, it's meaningful and moves you. You could say that about nine out of, nine out of a hundred other singers, but with Collis, it, I, I had read something recently, I can't remember exactly how it went, but it was like, it's 
hard to get past the sound of that voice, and once you do, it's hard to go back. And I'm a perfect example of that edge because I first started to learn to sing, and I listened to you know my heroes were technically proficient people, Sutherland, Price, and you know, and I my husband said, now listen, to me. He, I studied with him. He said, now listen to this college recording because there were, I was learning something, you know, that she was doing, and I was like. <laughs> I just couldn't do it because her sound is so strange. Is. And I am telling you, years, it took me years. And, it, and I didn't work at it. It's just that one day, because I was a, an immature child as an artist, and one day I came back and I was like, what the heck is that? I, I listened to it again and I was like, I am hearing, you know, 300 years of operatic history in that phrase. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. So if you were to describe, if you were to explain it, her ultimate thing is that no stone was left unturned. I mean, you can pretty much just take a score and write it out with the dynamic markings and the, and the stage directions and everything else if you just listen to her recording. But but if you're just starting to listen to singing, and I have many singer friends who are like, oh, Carlos, and I'm like, you are missing it, mister. You are missing it. You